Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is 10 to Life where we are talking everything true crime. We are talking about current cases, old cases, ongoing cases, new cases, cold cases, you name it, we are talking about it. So if you are brand new and checking out the channel for the first time, I hope you appreciate today's case coverage and consider supporting the channel in a free way by just hitting that subscribe button and turning your notification bell to on. And for all of my returning 10 to lifers, welcome back. As always, love having you guys here with me today. Now I wanna start this case by asking you a question. What is it that you wanted to do after high school? Maybe you had plans to go to college, travel abroad, take a gap year, or go straight into the workplace as I did. Most of us probably wanted to be happy, carefree, and successful, whatever our goals were. We had our whole lives ahead of us. Some of us chose to go to college for the next chapter. We envisioned making lifelong friends and attending football games and parties and just really finally being an adult. We hoped, of course, to make our parents proud, finish our degree, get internships, land at the perfect job, or maybe even get married to our college or high school sweetheart, who knows. Now, if this doesn't apply to you, perhaps you're a parent with similar hopes for your children. But either way, there are some things that you can never imagine or expect, no matter how much you plan. And that makes this story about a 21-year-old girl named Allie Rice so troubling, heartbreaking, and for lack of a better word, just straight up terrifying. We've all heard stories of bad things happening, but we brush them off and think they can never happen to us. You know, because we're always safe, we're always watching our surroundings, we're always on guard, and this story is not one of those. So let's get right into it. Sent to Life with Annie Elise starts right now. On September 16th, 2022, at 4.45 in the morning, Paul Rice woke up to his dogs barking and his doorbell ringing. When he opened the door, he was greeted by police officers. According to Paul, it wasn't very unusual for the police to be in the neighborhood, and it wasn't the first time that they had ever knocked on the door in the middle of the night. However, instead of inquiring about hearing or seeing maybe, you know, some pesky neighborhood teens, police asked him if they could come inside, and they would soon give him the absolute worst news of his life. Police informed Paul that his 21-year-old daughter, Allie Rice, was gunned down in her car just a couple of hours earlier. Allie Rice had just started her senior year of college at Louisiana State University. She had just turned 21 this past May. She was majoring in marketing and was accepted for an upcoming internship program. On September 15th, 2022, on Thursday evening, heading into the early hours of Friday, September 16th, Allie was said to be out with her friends, just having fun on a night out. Allie had apparently left a bar in Mid-City, and police believe she was driving towards downtown on Government Street around 2.20 a.m. when she encountered a train stopped on the tracks. Now what happens next is where this mystery truly begins. Allegedly, nearby witness reports of gunfire were called into the police, but when police arrived at the scene, they didn't see anyone, let alone somebody with a weapon. Instead, they found a vehicle by the train tracks with roughly a dozen gunshots fired into it, most of which had gone through the windshield. The vehicle belonged to Allie, and inside the car, Allie was deceased. Police noted that the vehicle seemed to be making a U-turn because the front of the car was not facing toward the train tracks. Upon further investigation of the interior of her car, nothing appeared stolen, and Allie even had some fast food on her lap. Now, in an audio recording from a nearby surveillance system, gunfire can be heard, followed by a car screeching. One witness describes hearing the train and then hearing the shots, but says he didn't see anything. Yeah, I know it was like a loud pop, a loud sound. 
People who live in the area heard the gunfire but didn't see anything. Sources say they believe Rice was turning around at the tracks as a train came by. That's when someone shot her multiple times through her windshield. I, really, I heard the train, but I didn't. But I, I ain't paid a mind to the train. I paid to the gunshot to fire. Police spent all day Friday trying to piece together what shreds of information they could gather. And I assure you that we are exhausting all investigative efforts to identify the person or persons responsible for this uh, homicide. People who live nearby say they're not surprised something so tragic happened in the area. So much goes on out here, you know. I mean, you really can't go. You know, like somebody fix my throat, I box. It don't make a deal about the shooting. I be like everybody the other night here shooting for my shooting. So kind of dangerous to walk down through here because, like I say, you see an ice box, you, you'll do anything. Police have been investigating what exactly happened to Allie, but they don't have any suspects, and the motive behind this senseless act is still a mystery. Even though the police received a ton of tips, it's unclear whether any of them are actually credible or helpful. Since some news clips were published, the reward for information on whoever was responsible for doing this has now reached $50,000 but still no arrests have been made. And several law enforcement agencies have now been brought in to work on this case, including the FBI, the DEA, the ATF, I mean, a lot. A shocked community at this noon hour with news of an LSU student shot dead. Her car riddled with bullets while she was stopped on Government Street earlier this morning. You are getting a look here. 21-year-old Allison Rice was a senior at LSU and a native of Ascension Parish. We're told Rice was a 2019 graduate of Dutchtown High School where she was on the homecoming court. As we now turn to the investigation into her death, the big question here at midday, why did this happen? Our Chris Rosado joins us live from the train tracks on Government where police found the victim. Chris? Yeah, Liz, well, police got the call around 2.20 this morning. I, I'm told Allison Rice was out with some friends at an establishment along Government Street and was likely on her way home when she was shot. Now, although there was not a train present when Baton Rouge police arrived, they are working under the assumption that she might have been stopped on Government Street while waiting for a train. I'm told they found at least five or six bullets fired into her car when they found her. She was, not, she was alone in the car when they found her as well, and police have no motive and no suspects as of right now. Allison Rice, whose friends call her Allie, was a 2019 graduate of Dutchtown High School in Ascension Parish and was even on the homecoming court there. And as a senior at LSU, she worked at the Shed Barbecue on Burbank. A short time ago, I talked to her boss over there, clearly heartbroken by the news of her death. We had just were talking the other day, and she she's had an internship lined up. She had just such an amazing, bright future. Um, and, and everything was just on the up and up, and she was about to graduate. and. It's uh, just so senseless and devastating that someone as bright as her would be taken from us this, this like early. So as social media does what it does, this case quickly became an online cesspool of false rumors and narratives. Now, while some speculation can harm potential criminal investigations, it's usually not the public's intention. It's even understandable sometimes because as humans, we want answers and we want to make sense of it and we want to help in any possible way. Then when the public doesn't receive the answer that it morbidly craves, social media does its worst and starts to spiral out of control. Personally, very similar to the Kylie Rodney case. And in Allie's case, there have been a lot of rumors swirling about possible organized crime activity. Some even suggesting that maybe her death was a part of an initiation. And to be quite honest, I kind of understand this line of thinking, especially if this crime occurred in an area with known gang activity. Nevertheless, police and the DA's office quickly shut down any rumors of organized crime regarding Allie Rice, even telling the public that speculation was actually hurting the case. In a press conference, detectives working the case and the mayor's office focused on addressing this, you know, organized violence to dispel the false rumors about Allie's death with hopes to end any sort of speculation that this was any type of initiation. One week after Ali Rice was found shot to death here on Government Street, police are staying tight-lipped on what they know, but are pushing back against rumors. I do understand that there was a rumor going around that this was some sort of gang initiation and this was a targeted attack. We have zero indication that that's the case. Another report was that detectives didn't immediately speak to someone who claimed to be a witness. I am highly offended by that, because those are my people. And he's offended when someone's saying it's nothing more than a rumor. Well, I'm telling you right now, it is a rumor that we are ignoring a witness. 
The lack of information provided did not sit well with those who knew and loved Rice. You know, her crime was being stopped at a train. A reward for information that leads to a conviction is now at more than $37,000. It's an effort by community members to find her killer, something police say they are working tirelessly to do while adding more police to the streets and high crime areas. Not everyone was convinced. Telling me that, that we're really hard on crime, we're not soft on crime. However, the chief gave two examples of not one, but two people accused of murder, both out on probation. For not one but two murders, that tells me you're soft on crime. The police even went as far as to say if they even slightly thought it could be related, that they would let the public know for safety reasons. So ultimately, the police believe that this was a complete random act of violence, making this even more disturbing and a huge question mark as to why and who. Who just approaches a 21-year-old girl who's driving home and, you know, fires off 12 gunshots into the windshield if at random it makes no sense and she was clearly on her way home she got fast food she's heading home i mean i can't even tell you the amount of times i've done that after a night out with friends and so nothing was out of the ordinary now while researching information for this case similar stories in the same area kept popping up for example on wednesday august 19th 2022 an lsu student fell victim to a failed robbery attempt on the lsu campus outside one of the dorms this victim was shot, but luckily ended up being okay after being transported to the hospital. But the man who attacked the student was arrested on charges of attempted armed robbery and attempted murder on Wednesday, September 14th, about a day and a half before Allie was tragically killed, which makes this video incredibly eerie to watch knowing what we know now. This attempted murder suspect wanted for nearly a month now in custody. Good evening. A 19 year old is in jail tonight, charged in a shooting on the LSU campus. This happened during an attempted robbery just as the semester began. Katie Easter is live on campus with more. 19 year old Clarence Hippoli is facing attempted murder and attempted robbery charges weeks after he was identified. A spokesperson says he finally turned himself in. Now, tonight, students feel a little more safe. 19 year old Clarence Hippolyte was handcuffed, marched to an LSU police car, and driven to the East Baton Rouge jail Wednesday morning. Officials say he turned himself in hours earlier. He was wanted for weeks after police identified him as a suspect in an attempted armed robbery and shooting on LSU's campus as the fall semester began. At least they're doing something. According to police, Hippolyte approached another student outside of LaVille Hall around midnight on August 19th. Hippolyte allegedly asked if he could charge his phone in a friend's car. After a while, the other student gave the phone back to Hippolyte, saying they had to leave. Police say that's when Hippolyte pulled out a gun, pressed it against the student's side, and told him to hand over everything. After the two fought for a minute, Hippolyte allegedly shot the student, running off but dropping his phone. That's how police say they were able to identify him days later. But it still didn't prevent it from happening again. Anyone could come on LSU campus, anyone could do anything, and it's even harder. A lot of times they don't find the person, you know what I mean? Students say they are at ease knowing Hippolyte is in jail, but are still on high alert following reports of other crimes in the days after. Some of those reports were unfounded. So it's kind of like, whenever these happen, I have to take care of myself a little bit extra more. Those other reported crimes included an attempted kidnapping. Police later said that did not occur. Another attempted kidnapping was also reported, but later a food delivery driver was booked with battery and assault rather than kidnapping. I don't, I don't really know what to think of that. If it was actual crime that was happening or if it was just people calling the police. Students say they do see more police patrolling campus since the reports rolled in earlier this month. No one from the university would talk about today's arrest or the crime on campus. Live at LSU, Katie Easter, WBRZ News 2. So how often do these crimes occur? A simple Google search with the words Baton Rouge crime pulls up shootings, robberies, homicides, and drive-bys, and they are all posted within a day or two before putting this video out. So I'm positive if you Googled it now, there would be even more results. 
And this totally makes sense because according to the FBI, Baton Rouge has one of the highest homicide rates in Louisiana. On September 22, 2022, Baton Rouge city leaders admitted that eight different gangs are wreaking havoc across Baton Rouge. So it's pretty scary to think about a large university with 35,000 students being in such a dangerous area. And it begs the question, are community leaders doing anything about it? Or what about LSU? Should parents be concerned if their students attend this school? I mean, you be the judge. First at six o'clock, a sobering admission today by city leaders. Baton Rouge has a gang problem. And right now, steps are being taken to stop gangs from wreaking havoc. A crime news conference scheduled hours before chaos broke out once again overnight with multiple shootings across the city. Our chief investigator, Chris Nakamoto, at that news conference and has the steps to keep the streets safe. Michael, tonight special units are working in high crime areas in an effort to target troublemakers. The problem, though, doesn't just fall on police as a broken judicial system continues at allowing criminals back on the streets and what appears to be a system of catch and release. Based on um, our conversations with our intelligence uh, personnel, our law enforcement partners and our truce initiative, we have around eight uh, groups or gangs uh, that are actively uh, we believe engaged in violence in the city of Baton Rouge. Tonight, we know eight different organized crime groups, gangs, operating in the city of Baton Rouge and causing chaos in the community. We are not soft on crime. Enforcement is critical. We cannot implement these strategies without the enforcement piece. Following a number of high-profile murders this summer, Baton Rouge Police Chief Murphy Paul, a number of people in his department, and the mayor gathered to talk about the steps being taken to address the problems. Gun-involved crimes are the priority. Street crimes and special operations units are also targeting sub-zones with the highest incidence of shootings. We have made more than 3,100 felony arrests this year, 355 juveniles, and we've seized more than 1,366 firearms. The WBRZ investigative unit burst to break a problem that was also addressed Thursday. Career criminals continuing to cause problems while out on bond. Darian Bailey is one of them. He led police on a chase despite being out on bond for an attempted murder and already has a conviction for another killing on his record. How he got his bond set by Judge Fred Crafassi and how he managed to be back out on the streets concerning to public safety. In many of these incidents, far too often we are seeing re-arrest of the same individuals who have already been arrested for other serious crimes. This is not finger pointing or placing blame, it's telling the truth. It's the reality of what we are dealing with. Multiple unsolved homicides were mentioned today at the news conference. Lieutenant, how do you tell me, uh, Commander? And the head of the violent crime unit took the podium. I do understand that there was a rumor going around. Assuring the public that everything was being done in an all-hands-on-deck approach to solve them. As the crime problem appears to continue to spiral out of control, city leaders held a meeting with college campuses today, LSU, Southern, and BRCC, to talk about it. Other meetings are scheduled with those in the justice system in the future. So where does that leave us with this case? I don't know, guys, but wow, I have so many questions, as I'm sure many of you guys do. Was her death, in fact, organized and initiation and related to gang activity? Did Allie maybe have an ex-boyfriend who was angry or somebody she dated, maybe a stalker, a jealous friend? After all, her car was allegedly only five minutes away from where she departed from being with friends. So could somebody have followed her? According to her father, Paul, they don't have any reason to believe any of those things, though, could be possible. And Paul has talked to the media in interviews and has gone over in depth how much everybody loved Allie and that she absolutely didn't have any sort of enemies. So they don't believe that anyone was following her or stalking her. Nothing from her vehicle was stolen. So when reviewing how Allie's car was positioned, was she trying to escape a threat she perceived in her final moments? Is that why she started to turn around and make that you know, turn that looked like a U-turn, or maybe she didn't want to wait for the train to pass, so she wanted to go a different way. It wasn't making any sense. Did Allie see something, maybe, that she wasn't supposed to? Was she the victim of collateral damage by witnessing another crime taking place, maybe a car burglary, or maybe somebody else even being kidnapped? I don't know. Or was this, as the police are saying, a random act of violence? 
Is there a serial shooter lurking the streets of Baton Rouge? Someone who knew the train passing by it could conceal the sound of gunshots? I mean, that seems a little far-fetched, doesn't it? And not to get too graphic here, but according to the autopsy, Allie had only sustained wounds in her chest and her arms. So has the gunman committed similar crimes like this before? If it's in her chest and her arms, my guess is she was uh, trying to block it if they're coming through the windshield. She's going like this, and that's how it happened. Somebody was in front of her, which is really scary to think about. So is this a case of simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time, or was this targeted? Allie's mourning family and their sizable supportive community want answers for this absolutely horrible tragedy. What does your gut tell you about what happened that night in her car? The only thing that I can really think at this point is it's a, a bad case of wrong place at the wrong time. Um, you know, she's not anyone that had enemies. We don't think that she was being stalked or followed. Um, you know, that particular area of Baton Rouge has a history of this type of activity. And, you know, unfortunately she got herself caught in it. <laughs> You know, what have the police told you, Paul, uh, just listening to Mike's report, 55 percent, so almost half of the murders go unsolved, which I'm sure you don't want to be in that half. I'm, I'm sure you are searching for answers. So what are they telling you about this investigation? I mean, at this point, you know, the I, I do have friends that work within the police department and uh, within the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office. You know, friends, incredible sources that are telling me, you know, these guys truly are working around the clock right now on this. This is being taken very seriously. Um, you know, this is information I wouldn't rec have received from these people had it not been true. Um, but despite that, all indications right now are there are no leads. They really don't have an explanation at this point. Um, they're trying to find some type of video footage, some kind of surveillance. Uh, they're going further back down the road to, you know, maybe check those cameras, see if someone was following or seeing if they can see, you know, maybe people walking in the area or something that, that could have been involved in this. But as of now, that particular stretch of town, the, they don't have the surveillance that's necessary. And her grieving father, Paul, gave a truly heartbreaking statement, saying he's going to miss the times that Allie went out of her way to spend time with him and show her love to him. And he said, she's the one that would come grab a blanket and curl up on the sofa with me and watch TV, even if she had no interest whatsoever in what I was watching. She would learn the music that I liked so she could sing it in the truck with me while we were traveling. And if she didn't hear from me in a couple days, she'd be calling me to let me know that she's okay and making sure that I am as well. He also laughed and referenced the embarrassing appearances that Allie convinced him to make in her TikTok videos, saying she thought they were so funny, so he went along with it, and also that she was toying with the idea of pursuing a career in social media, advertising, or graphic design after graduation. So Allison Rice was laid to rest at Hope Haven Garden of Memory Cemetery in Prairieville on Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. Over 500 people came to her funeral, where she had an open casket. And this, I think, is a testament, too, to just how loved she was. Over 500 people. Today, the family, friends, and classmates of Allie Rice said their final goodbyes. Her funeral was this morning in Prairieville. The 21-year-old was a senior at LSU. Last week, of course, she was gunned down in her car on Government Street. So far, no arrests have been made in her case. A reward, though, is being offered to anyone who can change that. Here is where you come in. If you have any information on any of the shootings we've talked about in this newscast, you can call Crime Stoppers at 344-STOP-344-7867. You will remain anonymous, and you could get a reward. Allie's father posted a very heartfelt Facebook post here. There is also a campaign, Live Like Alley, on Facebook, started by friends and family to keep her memory and her spirit alive, where people can buy bracelets to remember to live as she did. 
Good evening. The family of Allison Rice is determined to keep her murder investigation front and center. She was shot to death two weeks ago, and so far no one has been arrested. News 2's Nick Perlin reports on why the family says it's important to keep Allie's memory alive. Sylvia, Allie's dad, Paul, says Allie is someone who would always rise to the occasion, and that is what her family is doing as police search for her killer. Allie Rice's memorial on Government Street continues to grow two weeks after she was shot and killed near the train tracks. Now, a blue cross with her name can be seen as you drive past her memorial. Paul Rice, Allie's father, says the family has taken the last two weeks one day at a time. It's still hard. We're still struggling. Despite the tragedy of Allie's killing, the family wants to remember her in a positive way. That's why Allie's mother and a friend started the Live Like Allie campaign and made these yellow bracelets. Yellow was Allie's favorite color. Those bracelets were worn by the Tiger Girls and the Golden Girls at the LSU game on Saturday. Paul Rice says his daughter was an example on how everyone should live their life. To us, living like Allie is, you know, being kind to everyone, uh, being that bright person that walks into a room and just energizes the place. And that is how so many, from friends and families to co workers at the shed, will remember Allie. You know, they remember the, the silliness, the singing, the dancing, and that's, that's what we want to promote. Uh, during this time right now. Paul says he's going to miss Allie's phone calls, her laugh, and that smile that lit up the room looking to have fun. He even had a fun nickname for her when she was younger. Bootsy Bear. It, uh, her and her mom used to call her that when she was a baby. and That always stuck with me. I still, I probably called her that last week. As for the investigation, Allie's killer is still free. Paul is asking anyone to come forward with information. We're still looking for answers. Um, somebody out there has to know something. Paul says he's going to have to stay patient as police continue to try and solve Allie's killing. Even with the case still open, he wants everyone to know Allie was a smart and responsible person and that he is so proud of the life she lived. I wish I could have seen it last a whole lot longer. It, she would do amazing things. She would have done amazing things. At the last home football game at LSU Stadium, the entire crowd participated in a moment of silence to honor Allie. And local businesses have pledged a $50,000 reward to anyone who has information leading to the arrest and the conviction of her killer. So please share this video, spread awareness, and come forward if you know anything about this crime. By sharing this video, hopefully it will be seen by somebody who knows something or heard something. And hopefully we can get answers and justice for Allie and her father and her family can begin to heal. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this case. Do you believe that it truly was just a random act of violence? Do you believe it was initiation or do you believe that Allie was targeted? Not much information is coming out and I'm sure we're going to learn more soon because this is again very very early in the investigation as it hasn't even been a full week yet really. Has it? No, uh, almost a week or just about a week. So I'm sure we're going to learn more soon, but it is just so scary. 12 shots fired into the windshield of her car. The injuries on her chest and her arms indicates to me at least that she was trying to block those shots. I think this person kind of approached her by surprise because she still had her food in her lap. If she had only left that place where she was with her friends five minutes earlier, she would have gone directly to get the food and then gone. So did somebody in the fast food line see her and follow her? Then when she was stopped at the train, did they get out of her car and come to the front of it? Were they trying to carjack her? Were they trying to maybe assault her? Were they trying to maybe attack her and, you know, in a pervy way? And they shot, I don't know. I don't know, guys. It's, it's very bizarre to me, but I can't imagine that this is just random. Who would just do that randomly? And I don't know. I don't know. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. All right. Thanks again for tuning in today, guys. And I will keep you updated as soon as we learn more. Please keep Allie's family in your prayers and in your thoughts. And hopefully we can get some answers soon. And please don't forget to share this link so that more people will see it. So that maybe if somebody knows something or, again, heard something, they can come forward. All right. Thanks again. And until the next case, stay safe.